Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill, I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is all about that brilliant month of December and my witchcraft almanac for the month. get into this can I just ask you to hearken yes that is the sound of silence due to lots of complaints I have finally listened to you my audience and taken off the background music because it's too distracting for everyone concerned apparently I always quite liked it but then again I like a bit of t -t 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 in the background but today I've decided no do let me know if you prefer it in the comments below because otherwise I'll put it straight back on again. So as always with these videos I want to give you a broad overview of trends during the month of December and then we'll get into the nitty gritty daily witchcraft practices that you can incorporate into your witchcraft month. So with that let's get started. Now the Cornish name for November was Black Guess what the Cornish called December? Very black. Kavadu. And that is what December is all about. It is the darkest month of the year. And as a result, us being human like to bring our own light to it. Hence, I've got all my fairy lights out and a lovely part collection of baubles. I have a bauble habit. I can't help myself. Every year I buy more. My Christmas tree is so laden with them. I haven't put it up yet but because it's still only November. But I will, obviously. December. It's all about Christmas and Yule and the coming of the winter. The mid-range point with the solstice, which happens this year on the 21st. So with that in mind, the whole of December takes on this aspect of gathering into the darkness, the darkest, shortest day of the year, and then coming out into the light. December has many, many feasts of light in it. Hanukkah, Christmas, Yule, uh, to name a few. I'm sure there are others which I just can't think of quite at this moment. So one of the things to do in December is to light a candle. The Christian tradition of Advent, where you light a candle every single night and put it in your window, or the candle lighting rituals in Hanukkah, really is harkening back to the old pagan times of lighting up the darkest days of the month. So one of the great things to do in December is just to light candles every single day, from the first right the way up, through into the darkest days of the month, and then out the other side. The light of the month is held mostly by the moon, so December is very much a moon-centric month. This is the month where the moon is at its highest and brightest. It shines its most heavenly, glorious light down upon us as it guards the Earth. Because don't forget, the Earth is a moon-guarded planet. December is also the month of wassail. Now, if you don't know what wassail is, this is where you go out into your orchards in December and you beat your orchard trees to beat out the evil spirits and bring forth the great fruit and abundance for the year. The processions of people would do this, walking out, singing and dancing. They take with them a delicious hot cider cup. In this part of the world, there was always a king and a queen of the wassail and they would dress in their finery and the village would come behind them, everyone banging their drums, firing guns when they had them, singing and dancing their way to the orchard. The oldest tree in the orchard, which is at the mother tree of the orchard, would have cider or whatever the fruit was, maybe plum brandy if it's a plum tree, poured over it in order to make a libation for the tree. It often happened on Christmas Day, because Christmas Day, if you see the sun shining through the branches of your wassail tree, it means that you're going to have a bumper crop. This is the time of the year of the robin and the They've got particularly red breasts at the moment and they're singing their little hearts out, both the males and the females, because it is the time of year where they're pairing up 
with each other. And don't you just love a robin? It's also the time when they're sorting out their territories. At the end of December, it's normally the males who continue singing through the new year because the females are busy looking at their nest sites and thinking about other more homely aspects of their life. The tawny owls are also singing their hearts out at the moment. We live surrounded by tawny owls and in fact my son came up to me the other day and complained that he couldn't sleep because there was a tawny owl sing-off going outside his window. And yes, we do hear them. They are also finding their mates and marking territories. And so it's a beautiful sight to see a tawny owl flitting through the night sky and calling the iconic twit twoo that they do. December is also the month to walk upon the seashore. Now, you might, if you're very lucky, find a sea heart. Now, those good folk of America know all about sea hearts because they are from that part of the world. But us lowly folk in the UK and Europe are very lucky if we find one. They are cast down into the sea in September in the Caribbean and the carried sometimes on the currents across the ocean towards us. And if there's a good storm, these storm will push them further towards our coast and then a little westerly at the end of it onto our shores. So after a good storm, and there's one brewing at the moment in the UK, have a look on the shoreline for the sea hearts. It, they were considered extremely lucky and rare by our ancient folk and they are the most beautiful. You can use them in spells for prosperity and fortune because that is what their energy is most attuned with. Now something rather strange is going in the west of the UK at the moment in the month of December. There is a festival called the Merry Lude which happens in Wales. We call it the Oss in southern Cornwall and it's where people parade around with a horse's head on a stick um, covered in ribbons and with a, maybe a sheet over them and I have absolutely no idea why they're doing this but it has been done for many many generations what are your thoughts if you know why people have this strange festival around this sort of west country area of the uk i would love to know will you leave me a comment i thought i'd tell you about it just because it happens in december and it's i'd love to go to one i never have maybe i shall try Finally, in this overview, I want to talk about holly and ivy. Holly and ivy are at their most glorious at this time of year. The ivy is in full bloom, helping out the insects around us with much needed nectar. It is one of the few flowers that perfume the night at this time, and it does smell divine. Holly and Ivy go together like the yin and the yang, the male and the female. And so it is considered very appropriate for anyone to make a holly wreath should include strands of ivy in it. Holly wreaths, likewise, if you're going to make a simple holly wreath out of prickly holly, you should ensure that you put some smooth holly in there because this will promote marital domestic harmony. If you put only prickly holly in your holly wreath, it is said that the man will then rule the roost for the rest of the year, which, let's face it, much as I love my male folk, they need to have some put-downs occasionally. <laughs> Can't rule the roost all the time, can they? So you put smooth holly, which is normally the holly, at the top of the bush. It needs to be incorporated into the wreath to ensure that you have equal marital domestic bliss throughout the year. Likewise, a little strand of ivy will bring a bit more of a feminine quality to your holly wreath and also looks jolly charming, doesn't it? In fact, holly and the ivy is such a pagan tradition. They were banned by the Christians in the Middle Ages for being too pagan and you were not allowed to decorate your local parish church with holly or ivy. It was considered far too pagan. And the wonderful thing about the holly and the ivy is if you bring them into your house and garland your house throughout December with them, this is a sign to the nature spirits, that's the brownies and the half sprites and the elves, that your house is a welcome environment and should entice them in. So add them to your garlands this winter. As I said previously, the moon is the brightest and highest as it is at the year. The earth is tilted towards the moon at the moment. And so moon water is wonderful at this time of year. It's really strong in moon energy. 
If you don't know how to make moon water, I'll put my moon water video up here for you. So that was a general overview of the month of December. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. We'll start with the 2nd of December. So on the 2nd of December, the great love planet Venus is at its brightest as it's ever going to be in this past year. And so tonight is the best night of the year to use the power of Venus to create a love spell. The next date is the 4th of December. Now there's a lot happening on this day, so buckle down. First of all, it's the night of the new moon. New moons are all about new beginnings, new plans and new ways of thinking. This month, the new moon in Sagittarius means that it's a time for breaking the bonds that have bound you previously. So you can now move forward with a really can-do attitude. Now, this new moon in Sagittarius is also affected by the fact that we have a full-on solar eclipse in Sagittarius, which is happening in Antarctica. So unless you live possibly in the southern Australia, southern New Zealand, you can't really see what's going on, but it is happening. It is a full solar eclipse. And so the fun loving Sagittarius really brings this new moon energy to the fore. The moon is blocking out the sun and it is in its new phase. It's also closest to the earth as it's ever been this year. It is at perigee. This means we've got a dark moon closest to the earth, keeping out all the sight of the sun in Sagittarius. Any spell that involves a new moon magic, forward thinking, forward planning, it's going to be amazing at this point in the year. The other thing that's happening on the 4th is the start of the Geminids meteor shower season. The Geminids is one of the largest and brightest of the showers that happen throughout this year. It's also happening on one of the darkest days of this year with the moon cutting out the sun on the solar eclipse and being a new moon and being at perigee. It's all over the place with the Geminids meteor shower. And what do you do when you see a shooting star? Well, of course, you make a wish. Now, a wish for future plans because of the Sagittarian new moon coming out there would work extremely well at this time. So I really recommend that you go out, have a look for the Geminids on the 4th and using your new moon magic, make a wish spell. Perfect. 19th of December is the full moon and as I have previously stated as December is the month of the moon and the moon is at its highest and brightest in the sky at the moment this is the night of the year to make your moon water. You can freeze it for future reference. I like to use it up in December because its energy is at its freshest and most complete then. It is also said that this night, if the world does not freeze, if there's not hoarfrost covering anything in the morning of the 20th, then you will find your graveyards full because winter will be really harsh in January, February and March of this year, killing the old and the frail from our nations. The next date in our calendar is the 21st, which of course is the solstice and Yule. Now I'm not going to talk about the solstice or Yule particularly here because I'm going to do a whole other video so fear not just look out for my Yule solstice video which will be magnificent and in a couple of weeks. However I do want to just mention one thing which is Stonehenge. This is possibly but we don't know Stonehenge's greatest day. We do know that Stonehenge was a lunar calendar and a solar calendar and an eclipse predictor. And on the 21st, the moon is going to rise and you'll see it come from the main procession up to Stonehenge and settle between the two highest trilithons, which are the tall uprights with the cross beam across the top in the centre of Stonehenge. It will be a magnificent spectacle and there are going to be thousands of people enjoying it this year there. Stonehenge was built 2500 BC which predates the Druidic faith and we don't really know, the Druids didn't really know what was, well we believe so, 
what really Stonehenge was used for. It is obviously some kind of astrological temple, maybe, but tonight is its biggest night. I do recommend, and I would love to do this, going to Stonehenge and watching the solstice celebrations. The 22nd of December is the start of the great astrological sign Capricorn, which is all me, me, me. The wonderful sea goat is in full swing. Wish me happy birthday, which is not happening till January, but wish me happy birthday. And I am at my peak. So hopefully you will find my videos being exceptionally marvellous throughout the whole of this coming month. Let's hope so anyway. Capricorns are deeply practical and we do strive to climb to the top of our mountain very, very hard. And so I think that maybe you'll just see me working harder this month. Who knows? The 24th is Christmas Eve. And although this has nothing really to do with witchcraft whatsoever, I thought I would mention my favourite Christian tradition ever. At the stroke of midnight, all the animals in the world will bow down onto their knees with tears running down their furry faces in honour of the Christ child. And then, for one hour, they are given the power of human speech. This is an honour that they were the ones who first worshipped the Christ child when he lay in his manger. It's incredibly bad luck for you, though, however, to force any animal to try and talk with you in human speech between the hour of midnight and one o'clock in the morning. It is for them to talk to you, should they so wish. The bees will also come out of their winter slumber of their hive and start singing the psalms. I love that one. It's such a charming thought that the animals are honoured by the Christian faith on Christmas Eve. It's also the time for Father Christmas and stockings. I'm not going to go into Father Christmas because uh, that is a Christmas video, which I might do too. So watch out for that one. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I haven't really thought about it. I might be a bit busy. I have the world and his wife coming for Christmas. The 25th of December is, of course, Christmas Day, Christmas, when we get to open lots of presents, which is blatantly a pagan custom because that's what we did on the solstice and Yule. However... What I want to talk about is that Christmas, traditionally in the UK, is the time for ghosts. The Christmas ghost story is a very old tradition. It became extremely popular in Victorian times, but that is because Christmas Day is known as the day that the ghosts walk. Unlike Halloween, which is the day when all sorts of things walk, Christmas is the time for ghosts themselves. So should you wish to be a ghost hunting, tonight is a perfect night to go out and see if you can commune with the spirits. The 28th of December is a commemorative event of the slaughter of the innocents where King Herod tried to kill the Christ child before he could grow into the greatest king of all and slaughtered all those children under the age of two or whatever it was in his province. It is a truly, truly dreadful day, this, and I think that you should not do anything on this day. The reason why he might have slaughtered the innocents is obviously because he was insane, but because he did such a dreadful thing, and today is the day that we commemorate it, there, it is not a day for luck. Do not plan anything new or begin a new project or gamble on this day. No good will come of it. it. It is traditionally known as the day with the worst luck of the year. And you have been warned. The 31st of December is New Year's Eve. And I will do another video on this time of the world because there is quite a lot to say about it. However, for today, the 31st of December, now is the time to clean out your hearths and relay the fire in preparation for this light from the sacred flames. For example, you might have anointed a candle that you are going to relight your hearth for the year. Don't forget, very important. That is my almanac of the month. What is your favourite? What are you going to do? And do you have any traditions? I would be fascinated to know. Do leave me a comment.
If you're struggling for Christmas presents, don't forget that I have got the Ginny Metheril voucher, all of which are done on Zoom. You're protected because they're paid for on PayPal and they last almost indefinitely. I'll put all the links in the description below of how you can get one. If you want to learn witchcraft, do join my Patreon page because the coven meeting, the monthly coven meeting is coming up, which is hugely successful. People have been learning left, right and centre. And I'm thinking I'm going to add more tiers onto my Patreon to cope with all the people who need to learn at the different stages that they are. So have a look at patreon.com Ginny Metherill and you'll find my page. Become a patron. Help me to continue this channel and learn witchcraft. The meeting's coming up in a couple of weeks, so look out for it. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in a few days.